presented by We'll Grow and Fly GHG. Now you can listen to the full version of this podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just look for the Fuego fans. I always wonder what life would be without color. I believe it would be like a sad French art film where a woman faces all her existential questions. When I think about it, I imagine color like a magic superpower that we haven't learned how to use properly. This is how lucky we are of talking to Nicoleta de la Brown from Vida Magica Love, a producer, a host, an artist, a healer, and a unicorn who will teach us how to master the power of color. Because we all are superheroes, we are called the Fuego fans. And today I am with Nicoleta. Can you say your name? My name is Nicoleta Darita de la Brown. Where is that from? Well, my people are Panamanian, okay. so I'm first generation in this country. Oh. And so, I mean, my, my name has a whole story. We probably would do that another time because that would take hours and hours <laughs> and hours. <laughs> but you can give me some. I mean, the reality is that um, my, this is a funny story, like my mother when I was born wasn't my, her husband, my father, told her that he was going to name me. So my mother and I renamed me when I was a, a grown woman. No. Together. No way. Together. No way. Yeah. The how do you, what do you, how do you deal with that? I do everything. I mean, like, I do anything. Like, I'm a goddess. I'm a queen, so I can do... <laughs> I can deal with it. Anything. But, I mean, it was a legal process. Okay. But my mother went, and we have... I have a new birth certificate. Seriously? Listen. How, how old were you? I was in my 30s. I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and how old are you? I'm 38. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, girl. I'm super Is that DNA? Oh, my God. I am that super DNA. Grown. Listen, that DNA is real because I it's also real. have four children. Uh -huh. So, what? Yeah, I made human beings out of my body. That little yeah, body? Hi. What? Hi, yeah. I think my mother every day, I'm like, hi, mommy. Thank you for the DNA. Listen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you're so stylish. Yesterday, we yeah, met. We had, our clothing was, met first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we were like, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Like, and we did a whole, like, getting into our bodies. Yeah, that whole thing happened. That was so beautiful. And then today, look at us. Look at us again. We're mm. matching. Yeah. Energetically, we're too, to be, though. We're meant to be Energetically together. and, like, yeah. our vibe. <laughs> <laughs> So what brought you here? What are you doing with your life right now? Ooh, that's a, I love that question. Uh -huh. So what brought me here is um, I came to be a host, an MC for the Slam Poetry event. I am an artist myself, and so I came to hold space. But real talk, I'm a shaman, so... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're like, what? wait, 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 what you talking about? How do you get there? I mean, the reality was that I was born into it. I come from a line of healers. I learned what healing was in my grandmother's kitchen, right? So my friends, when they were sick, they would have NyQuil. When I was sick, mm -hmm. I'd hold a rabbit, hold a crystal, stand in the corner, put a, a stone in the pot, and I would dance to a song. Like, I was like, oh, that's what healing is. We didn't identify with a title shaman or healer, but the reality was that that's what it showed up as. And so originally, when I was little, I didn't know, I didn't know that it was a gift. I thought everyone had it. And then when I was older, I reclaimed it because I had to. So I guess you tried different things before. Correct. And kind of failed at it somehow. Because you have to take like some failures yeah. to in order to get of to course. your path. Yeah. So what, Ooh, what you do you try? Can I tell you? Yeah. You want me, me to tell you yeah. in the moment? <laughs> Listen. Okay. <laughs> So the biggest thing that I found was that the failure was I was not loving myself out loud on purpose. Oh. And the universe tells me by me getting hit by an SUV bouncing off the hood of it and landing in the street on my back. What? That was it. I was like, okay, pay attention. Yeah. Because the reality, I was giving myself to every human being I knew. I have four children. I was married at the time. I'm divorced now. I was a teacher of 100 students. I was a mentor to 20 students. I was doing all these things, but I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And so that moment when I was hit by a car, I had to let Western medicine heal my body, but I had to revisit the things that my grandmother taught me that she learned mm -hmm. growing up in Panama. When did that happen? Three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. You're kind of new. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm a brand new. A brand new shaman. Happy birthday. Well, no, like, yeah, and I was restudying. Like, so the reality is that the thing about it is I had to go back into study. Mm-hmm. I had to revisit something. It's like you relearn, you unlearn, and then relearn. This is. Did you have something related to correct. fashion before, or is just so? Yeah, I'll talk about you how was I show up. So I'm an artist. I fuse my healing practice with my art practice. Mm-hmm. I fabricate garments and I perform in public space, fusing heritage and culture into performance-based arts. My body is my canvas. So every day I Love say, it. who am I? Which goddess am I today? Which, you know, which empress am I today? And so it also is connected to my healing practice because my the color story is directly connected to a chakra. Oh, really? Yes. Now I'm trying to uh, wear more white and colorful Ooh, outfits okay. because I love black. Mm. And I wear black pretty much well, every well, day. Well, black is the absence of color or the inclusion of all color, depending on the theory. But what okay. what do you think it, it does for me? It grounds you. It grounds me? It grounds you. Meaning connected to earth, oh, right? Got it. Because if you take things back to ash, uh-huh. it connects you back to earth. So it's a shielding thing, but it's also a power thing. Because for you, like, listen... You're shielding yourself from the energy that's trying to attach itself to you. Oh. 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 Yeah, hi, black. But now that you are ready because you embrace the white, then you're looking at crown, right? You're up here. That's connected to something bigger than us. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And then when you, you had yellow yesterday. Yeah. That's your solar plexus. You were out loud on purpose yesterday. I was like, who is this? (laughs) Yeah. Solar plexus trying to tell me what? That, for me, like, when you are con- attached spiritually to color and it shows up on your body, it's a way of you either fortifying mm-hmm. or restoring that area, that chakra center in your body. It's all about balance, right? You were wearing a beautiful red suit, by Listen, the way. Thank you. Oh, my God. And my it was love at first sight. Thank you. I was like, oh, I yeah, want I all with you of just, that. I was like, hi. <laughs> and that was because my root chakra was fully fortified and so I was standing in my power as a so woman. So red is a powerful it's, color? Yeah it is. It's the root. If you look at the chakra spectrum, it is our our grounding. It's like I am secure. I am in terms of like this world, we are security. Like I don't need anybody else. Oh wow. Because I got this. And I love red too. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love like very bright colors. Right. I mean pastels maybe yes but like bright colors they're like look at me because it it matches your energy yeah. center but when i wear black it's like i feel sophisticated yeah. but also like i don't have to try that much it's right. so easy to get it right yeah. with black but some people say like oh it's it's like it kind of makes you depressed and stuff it's like that. not no not, not right no not no necessarily. no no because no. no. it's all depending on where you are energetically right mm-hmm. because the shadow is just the absence of light but you can choose to see, like right now we're shaded because it's cute, uh-huh. right? But you can choose at any point to step out. See, you're not, sh- you are not consumed by the black. You're, you're wearing the black. It's not wearing you. Yeah. So remember that when someone oh. tells you, oh, it's depressed. Like, I no, love it. don't project yourself on me. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is maybe your biggest failure that you're actually now very thankful for? Probably, r- real talk coupling up and getting married like very early because I was like oh you chose me that's cute because it was like oh if you are a woman I'm speaking for me only Mm -hmm. then my value was based on if someone wanted me and so at 19 I was married like I was coupled up I didn't get married till 24 but I was with him had children and then I didn't do anything to take care of myself I didn't pursue my passions I was like oh all that stuff is for later for someone else So the reality was that for me, it was not learning who I was first Mm. before giving myself away. That was me giving me. Exactly. But I didn't know that. You didn't know what you were giving away. Hello? Yeah. You didn't know your value. At all. So you sold yourself very cheap. Not even cheap. (laughs) Yeah, you know. For free. For free, exactly. I'm not for free. This is expensive. You're playing yourself. (laughs) So that's the reality. It was not knowing my value. And then devaluing myself over and over again until you can, like, if you repeat the same pattern, eventually the lessons keep coming, right? The Mm -hmm. lessons get bigger and bigger and bigger because the path is yours. It's destiny. 
and the the world like the life will just keep navigating you back mm -hmm. so the failures for me are like bumpers mm -hmm. right yes so it's like okay i went too far this way cool knock you right back yeah so yeah that was probably it not knowing my value and then when glimpses of my value show up extinguishing them so let's talk about your brand yeah Wh what do you do specifically for those of you guys who don't know this goddess yeah so my brand is vita magica love mm -hmm. i produce curate and present healing centered engagement for others but what that really is is me holding space mostly focused on women women of color mm -hmm. who don't often love themselves it is about loving yourself out loud on purpose so it shows up as workshops as talks as retreats as experiences that are immersive And so I do a lot of work with cohorts of women who are working, who are change makers, who are social entrepreneurs, who give their whole selves to their passion and purpose, mm -hmm. but forget about their own cup. Oh, oh, good. Yeah. I know what are you talking about. Listen. How does that work? So the first thing is you are out of your own environment, right? You are pausing to, on purpose to say, I'm taking care of me. So everything else you have on your plate is not on the agenda. The first thing you do is you release things that no longer serve you, the ingredients, and you physically do it, but in a loving, supportive, vulnerable, but safe environment. And then you begin to rebuild your toolkit. There's workshops where we're sitting down and you're building a self-care practice because their schedules are packed, right? Yes. But where do you show up? Put it in yourself on your calendar with specific things you're gonna do for just you. And so throughout that weekend, not only are you growing a cohort of sisterhood with other women who are in the same space, but you're pausing in a, in a setting that's a beautiful environment, but then you're also doing like a deep dive into like what it takes to take care of yourself. So it's a fusion of like self-care and professional development combined. So since colors actually affect the way others perceive you, yeah. do you have like a list of colors, what to wear to project a specific vibe. A hundred percent. Yeah. Gosh. I work with people individually. In oh. terms of that, I do individually. Oh. In terms of like garment styling or wardrobe styling, uh -huh. I definitely do because it's not just about being beautiful. Because listen, beauty, like, hi, yes, I see you. Mm -hmm. But also it's about how the, because the way you dress is how you're telling the world how to perceive, receive, and love you. Mm -hmm. And so I have a list very organized so for example if I'm thinking about going into a power meeting right from doing something I wear red on purpose oh because it is about like your security and uh -huh. on earth we connect that to money okay if I am feeling like I want love then I'm wearing green because, what yeah. if you if you want to feel love yeah. or others feel love uh -huh. from you yeah. you wear green yeah it's your it's your heart chakra It's the heart center. Oh, and really? so that is is opening up that space. And it's not just romantic relationship. Romantic relationships are nice though, they're cute. Yeah. But <laughs> but in terms of like We have so many different kind of loves. Oh, so many yeah. loves. Like, you know, whether it's your your family or if it's your girlfriends or, or just a, a friend, or even if you're trying to bond in terms of a business relationship, it's like set that up first. Mm. In terms of you are getting ready to speak. And that's how you introduce yourself to the world. Yes. Before you even do it. Before. That's why we connected yesterday. Right away. It was just like, oh. We just stood yeah. there for a second and yeah. took each other in and then we moved and then we were like, yes. That doesn't happen if your clothes doesn't say anything. Right. Right. And yeah. so there's a specific list. And there's things that you can do that you can say, I'm setting myself up for success. And the first step is to start identifying the colors that speak to you most. And also the colors you're avoiding. That says a lot about you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's things that you are energetically blocked uh, or seriously? avoiding. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. I never wear purple. I knew you were going to say purple. Okay. Why? Okay. So your purple is, is, right, is right here. It's your third eye. Your third <laughs> So you're not, that sounds terrible. But it's not bad. Okay. The thing is that when you, can I say why I probably think you do avoid okay. purple? Okay. It's because you are a conduit, right? You, you are what? You are a conduit. You are a funnel and a tunnel for, for other people's stories and energy. Okay. If your third eye is open, you're super saturated. That it means that you're getting all of their information. Oh, my God. You're getting their, their ancestors coming through. You're like, I don't have time to talk to you right now. I'm talking to them. Yes. So that's why. And actually, <laughs> let me tell you, like when I have these kind of uh, meetings, like event events, 
I give so much of my energy mm -hmm. that I'm like drained. You're drained. You're finished. And sometimes like people think, ah, but you're so energetic. Yeah, but I'm done. Like yeah. some days I'm like, don't talk to me. I yeah, don't want to talk like, to anybody. Right now, you're super saturated. Yes. So if your third eye is open, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off because mm -hmm. I'm super excited because like I'm like, hi, mm -hmm. energy. Your third eye is open. You're receiving all of their information, not just what they're telling you, but what they're not telling you. That's why you avoid purple. Oh my God, I learned something from myself thanks to you. Yeah, no problem. Oh, thank you. Also, but I want you to—I want you to know that your your third eye is not blocked, though. I'm just choosing not to use it Be, to open it. Uh huh. You're being mindful. Oh wow. You're shielding yourself in protection. Also, that is a royal color. It is based in royalty. You already know you're a queen. You don't have to wear it out loud. Oh That's also God. why purple. So <laughs> you don't have to bring purple into your. Okay. If there was colors that are, are like that you avoid because they frighten you, we need to have a whole nother conversation. Oh, oh my God. You just, it, you don't need it. I don't have a lot of purple. In you my, don't? Purple for me mm -hmm. is like, once again, my third eye mm -hmm. would be wide open. I am aware of how much energy I give out when I perform when I'm working with others. It's like it's like opening yourself up fully mm -hmm. without being mindful of you taking in stuff that doesn't belong to you. Okay. So it's a process to release it. Oh. So I do a full ceremony ritual after I, like I was on stage yesterday. Uh -huh. I went back into my room and I did a whole ritual to release energy that no longer was oh, mine. Oh, I would love to learn to do that. Yeah. Because I do a lot of live shows yep. and I'm, I finished totally drained yeah. Yeah. i kind of i'm physically sick yeah after that what do you do because your energy you've been super saturated like a sponge mm -hmm. you do a beautiful job and i know i just met you but i'm going to tell you this because this is true you be, do a beautiful job of making people feel immediately comfortable mm -hmm. and able to share their stories oh the th it's true Aww. that is like for real uh -huh. but the thing is when you do that they are gonna give you all of them energetically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and sometimes physically. So people wanna touch you. Yes. And you're like, I thank you for touching me, but I'm done. <laughs> Not because you don't wanna connect with them, but because what happens is they unintentionally leave some residue on you. Oh. So at the end of your day, you're sitting, all of this is sitting on you and it wasn't yours to begin with. Yes. You know what? I think that and I feel that your energy, you're very empathetic. Mm -hmm. So when you see someone, you feel what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. But when you feel it, it connects to you and attaches to you. Mm -hmm. And so the colors that you wear, the fashion that you put on is also helping you navigate the world so that the world knows who you are. You, I think also, when you show up in a room, you are like glitter in a room. You're like a disco ball in a room. <laughs> so if you wore sequins, if you wear sparkle. Is that a little too much? No, you trying to turn it off. Turn it up and turn like turn. You're like, okay, I'm coming through. So oh. all of you better buckle up. Yeah, because like, I love sequins, by the way. You should. Yeah. <laughs> also, because you are living light, you are living light. Oh, God. You are the embodiment of light. So when you wear sequins, you are letting the world know that you know who you are. Mm. And so you're refracting all of the energy back off you. It actually is a protection for you. Oh, really? They're tiny mirrors. Mm. Mirrors reflect back out. Okay. So you're not absorbing things. So it's actually really smart for you to wear sequins. Oh. Because you can just like dance through the energy and like it's not mine today. Yeah. So it's smart. What do you think about people who try to keep themselves like in the back? Hidden. They actually wear clothes that help them to kind of blend. I used to hide on purpose in, in plain sight. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I was afraid of my own magic. I was afraid of being as powerful as I knew that the ancestors... I cannot imagine I, you I not was, being this I was powerful woman you are. Invisible in plain sight. What changed? What changed was the reality of like knowing my value owning my value and I'll be real with you my grandmother when she came to this country she came here and she raised nine children by herself mm -hmm. and I realized that my grandmother always hid because she said it's not about me it's about them mm -hmm. when she passed on she's no longer here in body and spirit she said please don't hide like me she mm -hmm. came to me and I said oh I won't do that then because the reality is that the more that we show how our power then it sets up the girls behind us I have two daughters and mm -hmm. two sons it sets them up for success. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of women tend to kind of forget about themselves mm -hmm. because they feel like, oh, I have kids now, so yeah. this is it. 
I'm done. Yeah. Now everything is about them. Yeah. How do you deal with that? I'll tell you why it's important. I learned this quickly. Children learn from what you do, not what you say. Oh, hundred yes. percent. Yes. So if I'm not showing them how to live life passionately, how, how to learn from mistakes, from failures, mm -hmm. if I'm not showing them my gifts, then I'm in an unintentionally telling them to hide theirs. So I have to show up a hundred percent passionate because it shows them how they're going to show up in the world. We, they learn by what they see, yeah, not what exactly. you say. Yeah, and then they're going to move on. A hundred percent. Because they're going to grow up and you're not going to be their priority yeah. anymore. Right. And you actually forgot about yourself that, that you don't even know how to be a woman exactly. anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shows up now for them. They will advocate. My daughters will advocate for themselves because it's like my mom advocates for herself. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to wait till I'm grown. <laughs> you respect me now. Yeah. My daughter who's 12 is like a CEO trapped in a child's body. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> do that, do that. Yeah. yeah. That's so So that's amazing. why it's important because they already are showing me their mirrors. They show me that the, me taking care of myself is valuable to them because I see them taking care of themselves. I guess you kind of have to deal with people with maybe terrible vibes. Uh -huh. how, do you, how do you deal with that? Can you change somebody from having that vibe or that's just like you're doomed, doomed? You can't <laughs> change it. The thing is this, like people will become, especially when you're light, like you are a glimmer of light. You are light refracted. Mm -hmm. You are light in body. So Ooh, people I love it, keep saying that. it's true. It's true. But the thing is, think about flames, moths and things are attracted to flames, but they get too close and sometimes they burn. Not mm -hmm. on purpose. They're mm -hmm. like, I'm so excited. So what I do is I create safe boundaries for myself. I just make sure that I'm thinking, okay, this is not mine. That's yours. Whatever it is. Uh -huh. If that person's energy, they're coming to you. They're, they're in pain. I'm empathetic. I hear them. I see them. I value them. But I remember that it's not mine to hold. And all I can do is be present with them, give them as much love and attention as I can in that moment. And then when I go, I release it because it's not mine. Of course. But what about, oh, yeah. what about like a client and you feel like, oh, mm, the problem actually is you. How do you say that to that person? Well, the thing is that I'll be honest with you. People who come to me, the first thing is we crack open their core and we talk about them. So whatever they're talking about, we're like, I'm going to get back to you because all the stuff in your life is coming from you. Mm -hmm. So if it's uncomfortable, they don't like it. But then they like it at the end because the reality is they're ready to talk about themselves. So I do it in a very kind way. Oh, really? We kind of dance. How do you it. do that? I'm like, are these results that you like? Are the results showing? It's like we do. We almost do like a test. It's like, mm -hmm. so, are what's the six? Are these? Is this working? Hmm. hmm. Well, the factor is that all of this stuff you're doing is is showing up when this is happening. Let's try something else. So let's do a case study. Let's let's play. Mm -hmm. And so then they like to see what happens. It's almost like I try to be kind and like let's try something new and then we'll test it and we'll see what happens. I'm pretty good at disposing people with terrible vibes. Yeah. I'm good at it. I remembered when I was very young, we had this very problematic, terrible energy friend in a group. And I was like, I'm, I, I cannot deal with this. Like, n this is way too much. It's holding me back. I don't want to be friends with you anymore. And everybody was like, what are you doing? And you do that with boyfriends or something like that. I'm, not, I'm like, no. Why do I have to keep you know, listening to her problems day after day, and she's just, oh my God! What's that noise? <laughs> A boat. Oh, cruise ship. Oh, yeah. We're late, they're telling us we're late. No. <laughs> I, I did it so quickly and so easily that a lot of people thought like, oh, what a bitch. No. But I was protecting myself. You were protecting yourself 100%. That's what I thought. You are. I was right. And you actually were right. I was and you right. Are, I was right. You're still right. <laughs> yeah. The reality is that we have people around us. Some of them show up as family. Some of them show up as friends. Mm -hmm. But some of them, they show up as friends, but they're really acquaintances that are attached to your energy. Mm -hmm. So they're like, you listen to me. So I'm going to tell you all the things. No. And so what I've learned to do is I sit in, with myself and I think, does this person show up in my life the same way they're asking me to show up for them? Exactly. If the answer mm -hmm. is no, then you got to go. Mm -hmm. Simple. Simple. And it's it with love. It's just like, we're not working out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
bye, lay you, bye. lay you, bye. <laughs> and just let it go. And it's okay, you let it go. Yeah. Energy is currency. Mm. You don't open your wallet and throw it outside. Mm-hmm. So would you energetically just be careless with how you spend your energy? That's so true. So think of it that way. Mm -hmm. And we're, we think about things as value. So that's okay. You are always right. I'm just going to affirm and confirm that you are right and you still are. Okay. <laughs> we have a choice on who and energetically who we let in and who we give energies to. Can you give us yeah. five tips to start a healthier relationship with ourselves? and Ooh, a yeah, healthier yeah. relationship with our energy. Okay, so we're going to five. five tips, yes. Tip number one, uh -huh. in the morning, before you get out of bed, set an intention for yourself. For Go that day or for your whole life? For the day. For the day. For the day. Live day by day. Live day by day. Awesome. So, yeah, I guess we'll start over. Mm -hmm. Live a day by day, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, before you get out of bed, set an intention for yourself for that day. Mm -hmm. Think about how you want that to feel. It could be as simple as, I want to have the best matcha ever. That's beautiful. Or I want to kiss someone really. Because it's really... so simple, but also yeah. so achievable. Like, I want to. And, and you're going to be happy. You're gonna, I yes. did it. I, I, or I want to kiss someone really cute. Set that up. Whatever you want to do. Or I want to have a, a really successful meeting today. Really simple things. So before you get out of bed. Okay. The second. Before, before you I, put okay. your feet on the ground. Oh, got it. Got it. Like you're still in bed. Okay. Set an intention. And it's, it takes a minute. Mm -hmm. Right? Then the next thing is at some point during the day, pause in public space. Find a space that feels good to you and say something to yourself about how amazing you are. Make a list. I have a list in my pocket at all times. Okay. It's in my bag of things that... I know that are amazing about me. So okay. I just say them to oh, okay, yeah. And yeah, like, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I can go back <laughs> into a meeting. So that's Wait, you keep a list yes. with you. Yes. With how many amazing things? About me. How many? Oh, right now? Yeah. My list is multiple sheets I mean, of it, paper. It, oh, ah. wait, wait a minute. But for me. Do you, do you add something new? Yes. Every day? Not every Not day. Not every day. When you find when out I, like, oh. When I do something like that feels good, I just add it to my list. So I have, and I call it evidence, um, evidence oh, that I'm a goddess. I and, love it. And so it's a list. And it's just something I can always access. Mm -hmm. And I do that before meetings. Mm -hmm. I do that before important phone calls. I do that sometimes just while I'm sitting eating lunch. It's like, oh, okay. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Yeah. So keeping your list yeah. of amazing. And then pulling it out yeah. at some point during the day. Oh, got it. Reading at least two to three okay. of them on for yourself, to cool. yourself. Yeah. Cool. Tip number four will be to find a space wherever you go. So I travel all over the country. Okay. I always find a healing space, and I'll explain what that means, in every environment I'm in. Every environment. Every single environment. Airports, stadiums, and studios. What do you what do you look for in those kind of environments? Where you feel comfortable. Okay. So for a second, and I'll explain this why. We move around so much mm -hmm. that find a space where if you need to pause and breathe, or get back into your body, or just take a moment for yourself, this is an invite, you've already set that up for yourself and said, this is where I'm gonna go to take care of me for a minute. Mm -hmm. So I would say that as a tip for anyone, especially when you go to the same environment all the time, if you have a job and you work in an environment and it doesn't feel great all the time, mm -hmm. find a space in that environment that you can make feel good for you. Oh, okay. Cause we think about sanctuary as home Yes. Sanctuary should be everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere you go. Yes. It's like a state of mind. Exactly. You just find a, a, a specific geographic spot for it. Exactly. Okay. But it becomes tactile because uh -huh. you've created an actual space. Oh. Does that make sense? Total. So you don't, So that means totally. that if you don't feel good during the day, you're not saying, I'll wait to deal with it when I get home. Absolutely not. No. I'm gonna, That's way too long. I'm going to take care of myself now, now. So okay. all of you can pause. I've paused conference calls on international conference calls. I need a moment to process. Oh, really? Uh -huh. I'm like, poop. I need a moment. <laughs> they're used to it now, and they're cool with it because they know I, I'm good at what I do, so mm -hmm. they give me that moment. And they're like, great, I'm going to breathe too. Good for you. I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm going to go breathe. Love you, bye. <laughs> what about oh, number five? Tip, tip number five? So tip number five is at the end of the day, mm -hmm. once you are fully in bed, so this is back to the, you start, this, you end at the close. You begin at the, and, and you end and you come back to the same space. So at the end of the day, tip number five is when you are in bed, make a list out loud of things you appreciate about that day. Oh, wow. Simple things. That's I beautiful. appreciate that bird that just 
mm-hmm. spoke to me. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that airplane that's going mm-hmm. over. Like, I appreciated that person saying that they saw me. I appreciated that how kind that person was to me. Mm-hmm. I appreciated that I was kind to myself. Small things. Mm-hmm. Because it's your way of saying, I love that and I want more of it. That's so perfect. Tip. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you for teaching me so much in such a little period of time. I hope to see you again and I hope to have you around. Oh, I would love that. Like for real. Can I say thank you for holding space for me to share my story? Because oh. that is a gift to be able to share who we are. We, so we are lucky to thank listen you. to you. Thank you. Yeah. So where can they find you? So you can go to Vida Magica dot love. Awesome. Thank you so thank much, you so Nicoleta. Much. You are awesome and also just flawless. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching The Fuego Fams. I am Mayocando and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I am at Mayocando anywhere. Pretty simple. Thank you so much. Bye.